This video is sponsored by Wondrium. Seriously, your brain is going to love this place. In running a science education channel, I like to think I'm pretty good at explaining scientific principles and covering interesting topics. But in order to be a good teacher, you have to be a curious student. And learning has always been a hobby of mine. For someone with a wide interest in topics and an appetite for knowledge, I found Wondrium to be an excellent resource to learn new things. Their courses are taught by instructors who are real professionals in their own field, offering both short and long form videos. Their curated collection covers every kind of topic. No, really, they cover everything from playing piano to astrophysics to brewing beer screenwriting, documentaries on communism, and learning cryptocurrency. Wondrium has everything. If you love to learn and want to be taught by people who know their craft, Wondrium is a great service that will expand your knowledge and present a wide variety of interesting topics. I was pleasantly surprised to learn something new from one of their chemistry lectures. Apparently, chemical warfare as we know it goes as far back as the 6th century BC in Sparta, where Spartans launched flaming projectiles made of pitch and sulfur, which when inhaled would produce sulfuric acid in the lungs of their enemies. If you've ever wondered about anything, Wondrium will be your new favorite place. And they're giving viewers a great offer of a free trial. Show your support for my channel by subscribing to Wondrium now. Click on the link in the description below to start your free trial today. Cyanide is a very simple molecule. It's a carbon atom bound to a nitrogen atom via a triple bond. In nature, it exists as a salt by binding to alkali metals like sodium and potassium, or attached to sugar molecules called glycosides in the pits and seeds of apples, cherries, and peaches. Cyanide poisoning occurs through two routes, ingestion of either the salt or sugar form, or inhalation of gaseous cyanide. Gaseous cyanide, known as hydrogen cyanide, is created by either exposing a cyanide salt to acid, or burning plastics made of acrylonitrile, both of which add a hydrogen atom onto the cyanide group, making gaseous hydrogen cyanide. Inhalation is far more dangerous than ingestion, as cyanide gets into the bloodstream much faster. Due to its fast-acting lethality and general ease of administration, cyanide has been used not just on an individual level, but on a large scale as well. Historically, for executions in World War II concentration camps, mass suicides such as the Jonestown Massacre, and public poisonings like the 1982 Tylenol cyanide poisonings. What makes cyanide so effective is that it prevents cells from producing ATP by blocking the workings of the electron transport chain. From biology, you may recall your cells have an organelle called the mitochondria, which is responsible for creating energy for the cell by synthesizing the molecule, ATP. Inside the mitochondria is an inner membrane that contains proteins that together make up the electron transport chain. The way it works is electrons pass through the proteins, and in doing so cause reactions allowing proteins to produce ATP. Cyanide binds to one of the enzymes in the transport chain called cytochrome C oxidase, or the Cox enzyme, thereby preventing electrons from flowing through the chain of proteins and halting the production of ATP. With the electron transport chain out of commission, cells cannot make ATP in large quantities and must switch to a secondary metabolism called anaerobic metabolism. But anaerobic metabolism is not ideal. Firstly, it only makes about 6% of the ATP that the electron transport chain makes. Secondly, it produces lactic acid as a byproduct, which lowers blood pH. Anaerobic metabolism is only for short-term production of energy, like sprinting or lifting heavy weights, not to sustain you for a long period of time. With having insufficient ATP production, cells are not getting the energy resources they need and begin to malfunction very quickly. Nerve cells start to have sporadic signaling, and muscle tissue has insufficient and weak contractions. This causes the body to undergo spasms, loss of balance, increased heart rate, and elevated breathing. Once ATP supplies are exhausted, cells shut down, but not all cells in the body die at once. This causes asymmetric muscle contractions making spasms progress to tremors. The victim falls into a coma and breathing slows down to lethal levels. The cause of death is either asphyxiation or cardiac arrest due to shutdown of muscle tissue. One great example of cyanide poisoning in media is the death of Joffrey Lannister in Game of Thrones. Joffrey is poisoned with a substance called the Strangler, which has very similar effects to someone poisoned with cyanide. He initially has labored breathing, muscle spasms, and disorientation, which rapidly progresses. He eventually dies from either cardiac arrest or asphyxiation. How is it that a small pill can have such a lethal effect on the body? To understand, we have to look at a unit of measurement in chemistry called the mole. Not a mole, but mole. One mole of a substance is the measurement of the number of units of that substance, whether it be an atom or a molecule. 
Numerically, 1 mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 units, or 602 sextillion units of a substance. For example, if you had 1 mole of Chevy Corvettes, you would have 602 sextillion Chevy Corvettes. And 1 sextillion is a huge number. For comparison, here's 1 trillion, and here's 1 sextillion. Now, on a chemistry front, this is 1 mole of pure iron which means in this pile of iron shavings, there are 602 sextillion iron atoms. The lethal dose of cyanide for a 175-pound male is 240 milligrams. 240 milligrams of cyanide converts to 0.009 moles, or 5.4 sextillion molecules of cyanide. While it's not one mole of cyanide, it's still an enormous amount of cyanide molecules compared to the number of cells in your body. The human body is estimated to be composed of 30 trillion cells. 30 trillion sounds like a lot until you realize 30 trillion goes into 5.4 sextillion 180 million times. Getting down to brass tacks, when you take a lethal dose of cyanide, this means there's about 180 million cyanide molecules for every one cell in your body. Factor in your blood carrying and distributing those 5.4 sextillion cyanide molecules throughout your body, and it's very easy to realize how this small pill can be so lethal. This is why dose is so important. Science YouTuber Cody Reader made a video several years ago where he ingested a non-lethal dose of cyanide. Again, dose matters. He dissolved 15 milligrams of sodium cyanide in water and took a small drink. He estimated the dose was less than 5 milligrams. However, even at a low dose, he noted he felt vague muscle spasms and elevated breathing. I'm starting to feel a little bit of the effects of the cyanide. You see, I got a little bit of a tremor here. Um, my breathing is a, just slightly more rapid, but other than that, if I didn't know that I drank cyanide, I probably wouldn't even know I was poisoned. So, what if you take a moderate dose of cyanide where death is not immediate? Is there still hopes for survival? Yes. The antidote for cyanide is amyl nitrite, which essentially turns hemoglobin in red blood cells into cyanide magnets. Amyl nitrite is injected into the bloodstream and oxidizes hemoglobin into methemoglobin, changing the charge of the iron atom from positive 2 to positive 3, which strongly attracts cyanide ions. This removes cyanide from the Cox enzyme freeing up the electron transport chain, allowing ATP to be produced. Of course, you need red blood cells to carry oxygen as well, and methemoglobin cannot carry oxygen. So, the concentration of amyl nitrite being injected cannot convert more than 30% of red blood cell hemoglobin. In summary, cyanide can be ingested or inhaled. Once in the body, it binds to the Cox enzyme, preventing the electron transport chain from making ATP. This causes a nervous and muscular system to shut down, resulting in asphyxiation and or cardiac arrest. The cure for cyanide poisoning is amyl nitrite, which converts the hemoglobin in red blood cells into competitive substrates, freeing up the electron transport chain.